Angela is so creative. She, as I alluded to, she just completed a move. And so it got her thinking about movement and strength. And, and I think that Angela and I have something in common and tell me in the comments, if you do too, I just, I have to work out every day. And if I don't, then I don't feel like I did everything I was supposed to. And I'm, well, and in my mind, it may not be for you. In my mind, I worry, oh, this could be that maybe tomorrow I won't do it either. So, so when we're doing things like moving, who you don't have time to be working out when you're moving. But if you're involved in the move in some way, you could work out. And that's the that's when the light bulb went off for Angela, right? Yep. I was just like, because I need, uh, it's a team of one. Okay. So I said, and this happens quite often in life, right? As people get older, they become a team of one and it depends upon their personal situation, whether or not they broaden that and they can bring in a team with them and all that. Well, then my situation is team of one and okay, so how do I do this? How do I get in my strength training while preparing for a major life event? And I just thought, well, you're gonna do it yourself. You're gonna pack the boxes, you're going to move some of those boxes yourself. You're going to drive back and forth and take and unload. And then you're going to unpack those boxes over there. And what I did was um, I knew there would be no time to stop and lift weights. What had happened is everything happened with the move so fast. So therefore, the timeline became. Mm. And so I just thought, I, I'm not going to not, you know, lift weights for a month. That's just out. And so what I did is I packed heavier boxes and I'm not talking about little Amazon boxes. And so it turned out to be 120 boxes. And what I did was um, I took five trips here up north to when, where I now live. And I drove at least 10 boxes a day in my car. That means taking them out of my building, putting them into the car, unloading from the car, going into the new building, and then unloading from there, right? And so I did that five times, and I definitely unloaded over 50 boxes by myself. And then on the last day of the move, which meant the truckers were coming, and it was me and T in the car, also fully loaded. And um, on that last day, um, I began that day unpacking. And within three days, I was fully unpacked. And I mean, things hung, put away, boxes collapsed. I moved furniture. Now, there was a couple of pieces that I was like, dude, et, you cannot do this by yourself. And so I just reached out and got people, helped them do it. And it was a very satisfying experience, Amy, to know that I could do this by myself and not be contingent upon others for help unless of course it was absolutely necessary trust me there was a time when i would ask hey can you hold that door for me please why not right but as far as having people do the physical stuff no i knew this is what i was preparing for my whole life i've been training since i'm in my late teens OK, and uh, going to whatever those Elaine something gyms way back when on Long Island. And um, that's what I was preparing for was to be able to handle this move. Now, when I went back to the weights and trust me, there was a lack of sleep going on mm. uh, I went back to the weights. I just was like, OK, you got this. You're not at your 100 percent best a little bit, but within a couple of weeks, back to the weights. And then in fact, on certain exercises have gotten stronger. So um, it's doable. I, I can't tolerate conversation. I'm really sorry. I get shut down a conversation about, oh, I can't build muscle when I get older. Um, I can't get stronger. I can't develop bone strength. Look, folks, I had osteoporosis and I had the osteoporosis of a 90 year old. I was diagnosed at 60 and by 63 and a half, it was downgraded to age appropriate osteopenia because it is normal to lose bone density as we get older. So it's all doable. It's 
it's your mindset. You got to put your mind to it. And even if you're on your own, find the gumption within yourself. What is important to you about yourself? And what can you contribute to society because of whatever your personal gift is? Because then if you don't access that, you are denying others. You are denying others something uniquely special about you and what you can give to others. And I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. And if you if you want to be able to give to others and not be a burden upon them, then you, you need to take care of yourself and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Part of that is physical exercise. That's right. That's right. But you and just have to find something that you like to do. And right. you give so many different ways that we can enjoy exercise. You show so many different types of accessories that we can use. Mm -hmm. So for somebody, they might like to jump around on a rebounder. Somebody else might like to be on a stability ball like you're on now. Other people may like to do weights and tubes. So you've shown, or yoga, there's so many different ways that you can develop the strength. And you've, you've been on the show so many times and you've showed so many different types of exercises. And I encourage everybody to, we'll give a links to your website and, and where they can find you as well. But you have it on your YouTube channel. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel with all of your workouts. So people can just go there and they won't get any of this um, pre-talk. It'll right. just go right to the workout on this playlist so they can just click play and try it, you know, and, and you always show how you can modify it before you go with the weights and before you go with the exertion. So there's a way there really is. And I hope everybody is getting inspired. My new hero is Diana Nyad. And I encourage everybody to watch that film, Nyad. Okay. It's on Netflix right now. And it's been on for a while and it, it's an Academy Award nominee. And um, she, uh, Diana Nyad wrote a book called Find a Way. And I was going through some turbulent stuff not too long ago. And, and I just was like, you know, uh, I, I have seen that film without exaggeration over six, zero times. Okay, because the message strikes a chord with me. We have this 64 year old woman who tried for 35 years to swim from Cuba to the United States, to Florida. And she attempted it four times, failed. And on the fifth time, which was 35, approximately 35 years later, she did it. Yeah, she did. <laughs> and so she was older. And she, she was, was older, so she should have been more feeble and more, you know, and not have as much energy, but she did it. Yeah, that's so inspiring. It's the voices of others. They, they infiltrate and they chew away at our brain mm -hmm. thinking that this is correct. It's not correct. It's correct for them. Don't let the projection come on to you. I'm not saying that people shouldn't have been afraid of what Diana Nyad was setting out to do because it was a big deal. And she dealt with jellyfish attacks and you know it, it was a horror mm -hmm. what she experienced right. out there. Okay. But it's up to her to make the decision. And then she, she backed it up with a fierce training, mm -hmm. no excuses. No and excuses. So I love the whole concept of find a way. And I joined her group ever walk because I want my eyeball out on what she's like 73 now or something and 74. And it's like, I keep my eye on her. I want to know what she's up to. And we're keeping our eye on you. Because <laughs> you're motivating us. <laughs> oh, I tell you, that movie is like, oh, oh my God, you know, so, and I woke up in the middle of the night and I went, sell the apartment, just get out, change your circumstance, find the way. And that's yep, what It's never too late. It's never too late. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to be starting the workout soon. And like I told you, we're going to later on, on the replay, you'll go straight to the workout and you won't have to, to hear the interview or the... True or false, if you want to, it'll be on the playlist. But I also will have a version, this version of it up too. Okay, so why don't we just start off with our true or false game? 
Sounds it's good. time for True or False on Be Green with Amy Live. Answer true or false to Amy's questions in the comments below, and Amy will ask our guest for the expert answer. Okay, Green Warrior. Put on your thinking cap. <laughs> true or false, functional exercises are exercises that are performed in one plane of movement. Isolate one target muscle and include one joint at a time. Hmm. Okay, type in your guess and Angela, tell us about functional exercises. Well, this would be false. So um, according to IDEA, now IDEA is the International Dance Exercise and Aerobics, and it is Health and Fitness Association. So this is what they have to say about it. They say that uh, functional exercises are sometimes referred to as multiplanar movements that require coordination of two or more limbs, muscle groups, joints, or areas of the body. So there's a lot going on with functional movements. And I'm going to add a little something to that. I'm going to add that they definitely are reflected in activities of daily living, which is what inspired me to do this workout today because this workout is a branch off of moving and the, uh, and the movements that really popped out at me. And I was like, I need to do sessions on this to let people know if they're prepping for a move, they should do some of this work. Yeah. And even if you're not prepping for a move, yeah. prepping, yeah. prepping for your life. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Here's the next question. True or false? Jumping is technically not considered a functional exercise. Okay, Green Warrior, put in your guess and Angela. False. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So according to WebMD.com, jumping is definitely a functional exercise. So now, but if you really want the benefit, a really great benefit would be rebounding mm. is getting on a little mini trampoline and the emphasis is pushing down rather than I got to go high because that's a normal big trampoline, right? This is about pushing down, which is why it's good for bone density. Um, it's not perfection for bone de density, but it's really good for it. So I would suggest it to people from that perspective. Mm. Yeah, I haven't I haven't tried that yet, but it sounds like a lot of fun. I whenever I hear about rebounding, I just picture you and your happy face and and knowing yeah, the powerful woman. Story. Can I tell you a quick story about that? I when I moved in here, I was like, oh my goodness, because they knew about the rebounder and they were like, no, no, it's gonna make noise and all that stuff. And I'm going, dear God, I'm, I'm gonna die without my rebounder. You know what yeah. I mean? I just want my rebound. So I, you know what I did? I went down to the neighbor below me. And I knocked on her door and I introduced myself and I said, can you stick around for a few minutes and I'm going to do something upstairs and I need you to tell me, I'm going to come back down. I need you to tell me if you can hear anything. And so she said, sure. And I did it. And I, I put a big mat out, like you'll see back here underneath the rebounder. And I, I rebounded for several minutes, but I mean, really did it right. Yeah. Did this around. Oh. Right. And, and then went that back down the stairs and I, she said, you did it. I didn't hear anything. I was like, oh, Lord, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it was a, it was a thrill. Yeah. And you met a new neighbor. So that was good too. <laughs> I mean, it was her name. She's beautiful. Okay. We have one last question and then we're going to begin the workout. Green Warrior, what do you think? True or false? Functional movements include lifting. Okay. Type in that answer. Angela, tell us about that. Would you believe the answer is false? I thought, right. I thought that, like, right. I thought that answer would have been true. But according to both IDEA and WebMD.com, no. What it really is, is an extension of what we're doing today. So today we're focusing on two movements of push and pull. It's actually a form of a pull because let's say, think about it. When you're bending down to pick up something, it's about drawing the item closer to you. You're pulling it in. Um, maybe you're over your trunk and you're pulling out your groceries. 
what is it? You're lifting, but you are pulling them toward you. You're not going to carry them dangling away from you, right? So that's why I was shocked. But I was like, okay, it makes sense to me, though. When you break it down that way, it makes a little bit more sense to me. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Wow, very interesting. Thank you for sharing all that information. Knowledge is open. And I love doing that with you. All right, so we're going to get ready to start the workout. And you have, we have, uh, in the show notes, we have lists of the different uh, accessories that you might use in order to do the workout and also kind of a table of contents kind of thing showing you what order everything's going to be in. And right. Angela, I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you start. Great. I'm just going to put the ball away and then head back out. Excellent. And Green Warrior, tell me in the comments, what do you do for exercise, even if it means going up and down some steps or whatever it is. Tell tell us in the comments what you do for exercise. Okay, Angela's ready. All right, great. Well, welcome aboard, everybody. So happy to be back with Green Warriors and Amy and team at Be Green with Amy. So today's movements were definitely compiled from my recent move. And I noticed these two movements just sticking out from so many of them. And I realized, man, I gotta create a, a program around this. And the movements are push and pull. So these are functional movements and they are represented in activities of daily living as well, which I really like for this particular channel. Now, the accessories we're going to be using today will be a sticky yoga mat. I'm gonna give you a precautionary measure right up front. So if you have a latex allergy, you do want to look for non-latex or latex-free. I will also be using a workout bench. Now, do you need to use one? No. However, there will be an exercise where we are lying down on our backs, face up, which is called supine. And so when we do the exercise, you might want to choose to lie down on the floor or on your bed. Um, I'll be using an array of weights today between 12 to 20 pounds each. If you're brand new, don't worry about it because we're going to take care of you in this class. Um, and also, I will be wearing um, for certain exercises, adjustable wrist weights. They are preset at one and a half pounds because they're a great way to level up the work. And they're very safe. For our demographic because they're quarter pound increments it's not like you're jumping five pounds which could be a lot of weight to jump for some people myself included now moving on with more precautionary measures medical disclaimers whatever you want to call them if you have any back spine issue whatsoever in including but not exclusive to postural deviation like hyperkyphosis and osteoporosis you three might have been told not to forward flex the spine. What is that? Well, it's bending down, right? Um, then also, if you are medicated or not for hypertension, GERD, or vertigo, please be careful to avoid this movement, which is just simply flexion of the cervical spine. We don't want that. We also don't want a forward head projection. Um, if you have golfer's elbow, which is medial epicondylitis, or tennis elbow, which is lateral epicondylitis, be careful of bicep tricep work. Also, if you have carpal tunnel syndrome, this wrist position, doesn't matter the position of the arms and forearms, that's why I'm moving all around for you. This wrist position is called wrist extension. I recommend you avoiding it. Um, finally, for just a couple of more issues I'll mention, would be rotator cuff muscle issues deep to the shoulders. You're going to be careful about a movement like this, along with those of you with pinched nerve. And for some people, they're medicated or not for hypertension. You've been told not to lift anything over your head. So what I just did was listed, Amy, a whole bunch of chronic concerns. The thing is, is that there are too many chronic concerns out there to list. So what I'm going to say to everybody with a chronic concern is to please preview the work first. 
do not participate. But I would love you to, but not right away. And I want you to watch it and look for what you can do. It'll be there, but if you're not sure, then I would invite a medical healthcare practitioner who knows your body best to preview the video as well and help you make an informed decision because it's all about having an informed decision, not about second guessing. You don't have to do that. Now, the movements we'll be doing today, as I said, are push. Now, the muscles involved in push. Well, I chose to do this from an upper body perspective, particularly for females. However, for everybody to understand, that's going to come. It's going to be driven by the low, lower body as well and the hips. So, but as far as the upper body is concerned, we have the pectoralis major of the chest. We have the anterior deltoid, the front deltoid of the shoulders. And we have those pesky triceps, the back of the upper arm. Now, conversely, with the pulling movements, we have upper back muscles. We have rhomboids they're between the scapulae, those shoulder blades. We have the erector spinae muscles of the back. They keep us tall and erect. We also have posterior deltoid, the back of the shoulders, and we have bicep involvement and forearm involvement. So that's why I chose. So this is really going to be a whole bunch of stuff for the upper body for you. Just some gentle reminders. Always feel free to stop and rest whenever you need to during your workouts. But it's not an invitation to quit, okay? It's just take a few breaths, relax a moment or two, and then you jump into it, even if it's just one more repetition, because this is how you will get stronger. Also, you want to stay hydrated, and I'm only going to discuss water, okay? You want to make sure you're drinking your water while you're working out. Now, if you have issues like bladder or kidney issues, you may have been told, not to do the water. You follow whatever protocol you need to follow. I'm not going to fly in the face of any of that. Um, on my YouTube channel, Amy, I have a, um, a warm up and a cool down video. One video that you can interchange the movements. So the reason why I'm bringing this up to people is because it is recommended for those of us 55, 55 years and above to warm up for a full 10 minutes prior to any workout. And let's see, I've got those notes all covered for you. Now, how are we going to handle today? So today is broken up into two blocks of three exercises each. That's going to tell you we're going to incorporate something called triple setting. And what that is, is working three different exercises back to back without any rest. The reason I chose this is because triple setting is excellent for bone strength and muscle strength. You don't have to do all of them, all right? You can stop when you need to. Now, what we're going to do is to help those with the pre-existing chronic concerns who have a perhaps never strength trained before or never even exercised before. What we're gonna do is in a vertical fashion, all six exercises one time through doing one set. A set is a group of repetitions, typically between eight to 15. We're gonna do every one of them one time without any added resistance so you can get in your comfort zone and it gives me an opportunity to demonstrate a modification for you which is perfect because it winds up allowing the rest of us to warm up so does that sound like a game plan amy i love it and i i've just see, seeing that diana had said that she's got some carpal tunnel history and surgery hurts to put pressure on palms and arthritis pain. So it looks like some of these things that you'll be doing without the weights may be on point for Diana. Absolutely. And guess what, Diana? You get to wear wrist weights at some point. You don't have to hold something in your hand. That's the beauty of why I brought in wrist weights to my programs because I'm like, this is insanity. People are losing strength training because they can't hold. Well. Remember, Amy, when I broke my wrist, I figured yeah. it out. I figured out how to work around it, you know? Yeah. 
I didn't put in, I couldn't hold anything in my hand. So I understand, Diane. I'm so glad you're here today. I, I, I adore her. And I'm just so thrilled that she's here because this hopefully will be helpful for her. I think it's going to be. Great. So we're going to begin. Sounds good, Amy? Yeah. Okay. It, it sounds great. No problem. <laughs> Trying to read comments and fly the plane. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll do that to you again, I promise. Okay. So we're going to begin here, folks. Before we do anything, we're going to begin with what I call standing in an athletic ready stance. So what we do is, well, I'm looking down, double checking. Are my toes in the same line as each other? Then I want to line up ankles to knees to the inside of the high pelvic bone. And this is called your iliac crest. Notice fingers pointing straight down, not turned in. Now I'm going to turn to the side and I'm going to do like, I don't even know I can fully do this, all right? But it's called an anterior pelvic tilt. And it's oftentimes with somebody who's about to twerk, they go into that movement. We don't want to twerk. So what we want to do here is take a slight posterior pelvic tilt, pelvic tuck, we don't want to keep going into an abdominal crunch standing, right? We don't want to do that stuff. And that's what is meant by an athletic ready stance. So my first block of three exercises going to be chest press, wide grip, followed by a military press, wide grip, don't worry, I'll explain everything, and an overhead tricep extension. So the first exercise, chest press, wide grip. Well, I'm going to demonstrate it upright. So what I'm going to do is bring my arms out like so. This is wide grip, folks. Go a little bit on an angle so you can see. This is narrow grip. Now I'm going to come in a bit closer. I'm going to squat down a bit, puff up the chest, and exhale, push. And why do we want to be strong here? Well, I want you to be able to push your grocery carts without slouching over. I want you to be able to push the baby carriage with your children or your grandchildren in it. And also those heavy doors when you encounter an old building, right? Hey, really heavy. So you got to put the hips into it and then push. So I'm gonna to go, to go for one more repetition. Exhale on the effort, pause at the peak of the contraction. And then I release in. Now the next one is called a military press. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down. A military press is also known as a shoulder press or an overhead press. Now this is the movement that we want to be careful for those of you with the hypertension, with the pinched nerve, with rotator cuff. In fact, I'm going to stand here first. And I'm going to bring my arms like so. Now notice that I'm about, I don't know, 10 to 15 degrees away from the lateral sides of my body. And where I'm not is here. So for you folks, I'm just going to show some a few repetitions so you have an option. This is called delt abduction, going toward, uh, going, I should say, away from the midline of the body into delt adduction, A-D-D, -D, going toward the midline. Now, the key is, is not to drop all the way down because as soon as I do this, I bring in the supraspinatus, one of the rotator cuff muscles. That one injures easily. So you don't want to get it involved. So I'm hacking it by just cutting it out, doing it this way. Now that's gonna put a lot of work on the medial or middle head of the deltoid muscle. It's not meant to take a lot of weight. So I'm not interested in heavy weight here, folks, okay? So I'm just gonna show one more. And then from a seated position, I'm going to show several of the military shoulder press, wide grip. So here we go, wide grip, narrow grip. I'm going wide. Exhale, push. Inhale, lower. Exhale, push. So the breath is done in and out through the nose. Just take a few more here. So between the two, we will have in a full set. Last one and exhale, slowly lower down. And then the last exercise of the first block is the tricep overhead extension. Now, for those of you, again, with um, hypertension, with uh, the pinched nerve or rotator cuff, I'm gonna tell you to do what I call a straight arm 
press back. So you bring your arms behind you like so. I'm going to come in closer because you know what I'm doing here with the feet. And I'm going to go straight back and release to there. Now notice I'm not dropping in, right? I want to keep some tension on the back of that upper arm, that tricep area, the posterior deltoid, and just reaching back. So that's your option. For the rest of us, I'm going to sit down and show you because I want you to see the arms fully extended. When I'm using the weights, I will be standing so you won't see complete extension. So you bring your arms up. I'm just gently interlocking my fingers. I'm not squeezing real hard, okay? Especially hypertension, you want to do that. So arms are up. And then I bend the elbows and the wrists go just below the top of my head. I'm not interested in dropping my hands all the way down to touch the back of the upper portion of the upper back. You don't want to do that. It's too much. And here is the exhale. Notice I'm trying to hug my ears with my inner arms. I'm going to go for one more like this. And slowly lower. Let's just take a couple of nice big shoulder rolls just to release all that. So that was the push. Now we're going to work on the pull. So the first exercise is a mouthful, okay? So it's a bent over back row, reverse narrow grip. Amy kind of has a hint. She knows what's coming. <laughs> and so, you, you prepped me, so I figured I'd, I'd put them in for everybody to see. That's great. Thank you. It's very helpful in fact. So what I'm going to do is stand with my feet wider apart, and I'm going to bend forward. Now, those of you with the back spine issues, right, um, the osteoporosis, um, so anything that you've been told not to forward flex that spine. So what I would do if I were you is I would work here like so pulling the arms. You could do a lat pull down or you can do this very exercise standing up like this. So I bring the arms out in front, they're close together, but when I pull them in, I puff up the chest. And what happens is that the shoulder blades, the scapulae come toward each other. So you could do that lat pull down or here with standing. Now, what you don't want to do with this is to force the head like this. That's the forward head or forward neck projection. You want to avoid that. I'm lifting the chest. You see that? I don't collapse when I bring the arms out. And I'm going to go for two more. Exhale, pause. Inhale, release. Exhale, pause. Inhale, release lower the arms down. Now we're going to move into a basic bicep curl, but I'm going to put a little bit of something, a little oomph to it. So I'm going to teach you the concept of pronation and supination. So notice the hands are facing this way. That would be supinated, all right? So I'm going to turn the hands this way. That would be pronated. And hugging the outer upper ribs with the inner upper arms, I then supinate to curl from the elbow, basically just flexing the elbow and controlling so the arm isn't flinging all over. It can happen. Now, when the weight gets heavier, you might start to see this kind of thing. That's okay. But if you're doing this and you're heaving the weight, whew, take it down. You're going to hurt your back. You're going to hurt your shoulders. Hello, Green Warriors. So basic bicep curl, we want these strong so you can carry those groceries, right? That you can lift them, pull them up from that grocery cart, put them into your trunk, and then lift them out of the trunk and bring them on into your home. Exhale, pause. We're going to go for two more. And then we have one more exercise for the second block. And I'm going to sit turn to the side a bit. And this is the wrist flexion. I chose wrist flexion because wrist extension is contraindicated for those with carpal tunnel. So this is a good one if you have carpal tunnel and you're not in active pain. It cannot be acute pain. If you're in acute pain, don't do it, all right? But if you're not in acute pain, that's okay. 
So what I'm doing here is you notice I lifted my heels off the floor. Basically just lifting my thighs a little higher. If you have yoga blocks, you can also put your feet up on the blocks just to bring them up a little higher. Then I place the forearms and elbows on the thighs. From here, now, for carpal tunnel, I want you to go into flexion. You push your elbows down. You don't lift. You don't do this stuff. It's not about that. It's just moving from the wrist to flexion to neutral. But the rest of us can bypass neutral and go to wrist extension. And then we curl up to wrist flexion. Carpal tunnel, do not do the wrist extension. I had a great chat one time about this, Amy, with Dr. Frank Sabatino. And he's like, yeah, forget the wrist extension for them. Yeah, like, he's, he's fabulous. We had him on the show. Wonderful, oh, yeah. wonderful human being. Oh, he's awesome. And I, I'm actually going to be getting in a, a spine adjustment from him at the end of the month. I'm just like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> After that move, I'm like, please, I want to put my spine back in place. <laughs> And just one more here, pause and release. We're gonna shake it out. Let's do this with weights now, kids, okay? So I'm gonna start out with my chest press wide grip. I've got 18 pounders set up. Coming on to my back. Notice the weights stay in contact with the thighs. It's safer. Now, if you have hypertension, vertigo, or GERD, lift your head a little bit. So put a folded hand towel underneath your head and lift it up. So I'm going to exhale on the effort, focusing on a non-moving point on the ceiling. My back, believe it or not, has a slight arch in it on purpose so I can puff up the chest and not collapse the front chest as I lift the weight overhead exhale on the effort pause right here that's the peak of the contraction inhale as you lower again breath in and out through the nose working pectoral major front deltoid and tricep let's go for one more repetition exhale push i bring the thighs toward the weights weights to the thighs to carefully roll on up the next exercise is the military press wide grip. So this is the one where I'm going to put on these wrist weights because I'm trying to level up here, folks. I was at 15 for a really, really long time. I was enough is enough. And started working with the quarter pounders in the wrist weights, and now it's 16 and a half. And let's grab them. Now, remember, I'm going to do this standing so you won't see the weights overhead because really my preference is that you stand whenever possible. It is my preference because that's what you do in real life. Here we go. Exhale, push. Now, maybe you have wrist weights. You can wrap them around, right? And you can just make a very soft fist as you lift the arms. Want to be able to reach up and put your groceries away like your cans of beans in those top shelves those top shelves of your kitchen cabinets and one more exhale that's right baby believe in yourself i love it amy i love it the next exercise i guess so that's the tricep overhead extension let me Remove the wrist weights. And I'm going to grab a 20 pounder for this. Athletic ready stance. And here we go. So I have one hand cupped over the other, holding what we call the collar of the weight. That's the black rubber end that you see on each side of the bar. Want those strong triceps so they can assist the larger muscles in the big movements. And one more. Easy taking it down. Back to what? The 
chest press, wide grip. Second set. Now, for some of you with low back issues, you can always put one foot up on the bench or both feet. Notice I'm not bending my wrist. I'm pushing up from the heels of the hands. One more. Going for one more. <clears throat> weights to thighs, thighs to weights. Time to put on the wrist weights. I really like this company, All Pro, for the wrist weights. Um, they are one of the few that they make them in the quarter pound increments. Thus making it really doable for us. Okay. Oh, here we go. So, athletic ready, military prep, wide grip. Hit the ceiling, but don't clank the weights into each other. Two more. Easy lowering down. Now grab a 20 pounder for the tricep overhead extension. It's also known as an overhead press, the tricep overhead press. Every time you straighten the elbow, you are extending the tricep muscle. Every time you bend, you are flexing the bicep muscle. Two more. One more, I'm gonna go for it. Yes, some of us make level up, baby, that's right. <laughs> Love it. Okay, third round of the triple set. Chest press, wide grip. And you will sweat on triple setting, and especially if you live where Amy and I live in Florida. Puff up the chest. So you want to focus on a non-moving point on the ceiling. In yoga, we call this the drushti. And hit that point of focus upon which to gaze. Two more. <clears throat> All right. Weights to thighs, thighs to weights. Now we're going to put on those wrist weights. I also like them because as adjustable wrist weights, you can remove the weights and you can wash the cuffs because the preset ones you can't and they get skanky. And military press, shoulder press. That's right. Belly button in. One more. You can hear me, my breath changing there.
and the last of the first block, tricep overhead extension, athletic ready. Easy when you lower it. Okay, first block down. Second block, we begin with the bent over back row, reverse narrow grip. Upwards. Okay, we put this over here. Okay. I'm going to turn to the side. Just as a reminder, the feet are wider than the hips, but not like. You don't want to do like a split squat or something like that, okay? So. <clears throat> Pull. Gaze out in front of you. Try not to drop the head down. Lots of work on the forearms, the wrists, the biceps. Whoosh. One more. <clears throat> Take it on down. So we're going to prepare next the bicep curls. And just make sure that you don't roll around, not therefore crossing them. And on go the wrist weights. And another reason why I like all pro, because you know, I track all this stuff. Um, boy, oh boy, during the, the from the beginning of the pandemic to now. The prices for this stuff has gone up exponentially. And I don't think it's necessary to spend $65 on a pair of one pound lace up uh, 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 wrist weights that are not adjustable. All Pro has kept their prices consistently low for 30 years. So that's why I'm, all, I'm real big about them. Okay, here we go. Bicep curls with the pronation and supination. Let's get a little closer. 16 and a half pounds. Careful. Carpal tunnel. Careful. Golfers, tennis elbow. That's right. Find a way. One more like this. Control it down. Now, we're going to grab my 12 pounders for the wrist flexion. I don't know if you noticed my new weight rack, baby. It holds all my weights from one through 30 pounds each. I am definitely admiring it and and uh, putting it on a list for something that I want to get. For yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It holds 1,100 pounds. Wow. And it is the only exercise equipment accessory I have ever purchased that had five stars. For you have to send me, the link. send me the link to that. I will definitely do that. Look at you, reflection. <laughs> reflection it is. Be careful, carpal tunnel, right? And here too, I would be careful with uh, golfers or tennis elbow. One more, rest when needed, baby, but don't quit because you'll never get stronger that way. Okay, back to bent over back row. Narrow grip. Now, this is going to be a whole new beast after we did biceps and wrist flexion. <laughs> it's going to be a new beast. So, let's see what happens, kids. The upright version of this is great for those with hyperkyphosis without any weight. Last one. 
Careful. So that's, we're on our second set of the second block. And yeah, bicep curls. Always remember to stay hydrated and stop and rest when you need to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to talk to me. <laughs> Supination, pronation. That's right. That's really the attitude. You got to recognize when you need a break. You don't think I didn't recognize that when, oh, during the whole move? I was like, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> you have to know when to rest and then to know, okay, I'm messing around. I can get back into it. Uno más. Twelve pounders, wrist flexion. Let me just turn this direction a little bit for you. Here we go. What I'm not doing is when I lower into wrist extension, I'm not lifting my elbows off my thighs. They are really digging into my thighs, which is why I'm lifting the thighs up by being up on the balls of my feet. One more. Watch the release. Now, third round. Once again, that bent over back row. Reverse narrow grip. Looking out in front, we try not dropping the head down to the floor. Not great. Belly button up and in, folks. Very important to protect your back this way. Also great to engage your deepest of the core muscles, the transversus abdominis. Last one. <clears throat> Putting the wrist weights back on. Hey, and listen, folks, I once had a broken wrist, and it wasn't all that long ago, right, Amy? Yep, you <laughs> came on the broadcast with your broken wrist and did your workout. Exactly. <laughs> and please don't think I was cocky, folks. I had uh, hand, two hand surgeons, three, actually, three opinions, but one was the instructor of the other two. And I showed her how I wanted to train and what I could do with a two-inch patch just below my bent elbow on the arm that was broken, the left. And I can work from there with bands and tubing, not holding anything in my hands. I even wrapped um, wrist weights around my arm. Not on the cast though. You have to watch the broadcast and know what I did. Don't assume, okay? One more. Mm, there it is. <laughs> Yes, you get to the point where you might fatigue out, right? That's okay. It's perfectly fine. Then you just move on to the next exercise, like we're doing right here. Okay, I think it's the last exercise, third round, Amy. I'll face straight forward, heels lifted. Just dig those elbows in. Now, do not hunch, right? Don't let this stuff happen. Mm -mm. Be vigilant about it. Oh, last one. And release. All right, so I'm gonna tell people if they want to check out that warm up cool down video on my channel, they can go there. 
But for the moment, let's take a few stretches together. So we're gonna push the walls away like Atlas. Who's not gonna do this though? Carpal tunnel. What you're gonna do is this. Lengthen through your middle fingers. This is a little something that ballet dancers do to get those really cool arms, right? So we're gonna hold here and lengthen the whole arm. It's not about going back here. I'm not doing that. Pushing one wall, then the other. Then I turn the thumbs down, inhale, inhale, exhale. I'm gonna open up that chest, lengthen the biceps and the triceps, and I'm stretching the front deltoid. Mmm, feels great. And some of you may not be able to get the hands together, so you hold on to a yoga strap or a belt, whatever, and you do this, and you draw the arms back. So we want that scapular retraction to happen, but without this stuff. Then interlock the fingers. So for those of you medicated or not for hypertension, you might want to do it this way, one hand on top of the other. I'm coming up here. Now, I'm going to squat down more. This is a wrist extension. Who's not going to do it this way? Carpal tunnel. You're going to do this, one hand on the other, okay? Your body is definitely amazing of capable things. Capable of amazing things, I should say. And slowly lower. Um, I want you to do some spine flexion and extension with me. So I'm going to stand a bit to the side. In yoga, we call it a standing cat cow. So you place the hands lightly on the thighs. And on the inhale, you drop the belly down, tip the tailbone up, draw the shoulders back. Now, for those of you who have had a stroke or a TIA, a transient ischemic attack, don't do this. Just keep your head neutral. For the rest of us, we can lift the head. It's kind of nice. So this is that little back bend we were showing before. Now on the exhale, those of you who are medicated or not for hypertension have GERD or vertigo, you're going to just keep the head neutral while the rest of us move into spine flexion. Those of you with, car with uh, osteoporosis and the spine flexion issues, you're going to avoid this movement you go from here to neutral that is it while the rest of us move into spine flexion i want you to think of this as a standing abdominal crunch belly button coming in out the small of your back that's that transversus abdominis that is your internal girdle your internal corset and then you open back out and hold here Take your time, slowly roll up. Now, because life is so much forward flexion, I wanna end the note here on spine extension, all right? Which is a back bending. So what we do is we keep the feet a bit wider than the hips, place the hands on the sacrum. That's the flat triangular plate at the low back, but who can't do that movement? That's a wrist extension. You go down here. You just let the hand land wherever behind you where the wrists are straight. And I'm going to start the process of thinking about sliding the sacrum down toward my heels. Does the sacrum really slide? No, it doesn't. But I just want you to think about that. And what will happen is, wow, I start to get a stretch in the hip flexors. I'm softening my knees, stretching the quads, roll the shoulders back. And head neutral for TIA stroke, but if you don't have ever had either of those, feel free. Let the neck go. You can also straighten your knees. And then inhale, you lift up on the kneecaps to engage the quads isometrically. Exhale, release. Let's take some nice big shoulder rolls. And that's what we've got for you today, Amy, for our 16th episode. Week 16, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to grab the ball again. Oh, and get it, get a drink of water if you want I'm to. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, so encouraging. And I hope that everybody who's watching realizes that you didn't start off with those kinds of weights. You built yourself up to it. 
And it doesn't matter how old you are. It's never too late to start and just start slow and work your way up. And just awesome. Everybody click like. That's how you applaud on on uh, Facebook and Instagram and <laughs> and YouTube. You click like. And that's how we know that you love Angela as much as I do. So awesome. I wanted to just a couple of people. Oh, Carrie said she's, she says, I'm at work. I can't chat. Just listen. Oh, <laughs> Carrie, I know it. That's screaming, I- Carrie. <laughs> And Victor Laviola said, this is such a great presentation. Wow. Thank you. Yes. Glad that you're here. And I hope that you'll enjoy it. And we're going to have a replay. We're going to have it available on a playlist where it won't have any of the introductory part. It'll just go right into the workout if you want to do that. Awesome. And Diane is thanking you for that suggestion for the wrist weights. Yes. yes. Yeah. Can you I know, just show Diane yeah. something? So yes. Diana- I'm going to put you on solo so you can show it. Oh, okay. So Diana, what I was talking about before was when I had the broken wrist, right? I couldn't do any of that. So I had that my original cast was all the way up to here, which means I couldn't fully flex the elbow, which means I couldn't do much for this upper body at all. So in order not to re to go back to an osteoporosis status, I knew I still had to strength train. So there was a two, about a two, two and a half inch cut to the cast because I asked the the um, the mentor to my um, my surgeons what she thought. She said, "Cut it to here. You'll still have the bone healing because it was the scaphoid bone from the uh, carpal bones at the wrist." And I put like an exercise loop around there. I stuck my hand through like the handle of an exercise tube, anything so that I could do this, this, bent over, nothing was in my hand. And I did not become osteoporotic again with each um, uh, scan after the broken wrist, just kept showing the osteopenia. And so I just letting you know, wrist weights is a great way to go for you. So I'm so thrilled. They really are. And I, one thing that I do, I'm not struggling with grip at, at this time in my life, but I like them because if I'm doing a workout and I want to keep going and not take a break because at that point, maybe I don't need it, but maybe I need to go down in weight. Mm-hmm. So I will start a workout with heavy, heavy weights in my hands and the wrist weights. Mm-hmm. And then when it's starting to get a little heavy, I'll put down the weights that are in my hands and then I'll just keep going a little bit more. So I love them for that too. They're easily adjustable and they yeah. absolutely, you know, for that kind of thing, it's, they're perfect, Amy. Good for you. It's great. Just great. Can you, can you show us those? Because you said that they were a little bit different than some other weights that you had uh, found on the market. And I love how you said that, that you could wash them because that's, I use mine every day and I'm, and I'm saying, gee, that's, that's stuff that's skanky. Um, stuff that's, yeah. Yeah, it's skanky stuff. You know, people yeah. do weighted vests too. It's like, well, I bought a six pound weighted vest for you because that thing's going to get mold spores on it and everything. So all it is now, you could you can't even see the logo anymore of this. Okay, so I'm, trust me, I bought these at the beginning of the pandemic, and I'm you know I'm beating them up. So all they are is insertions let me come down here insertions of quarter pound metal weights and that's why you pull them out and you wash your cup and just throw it in the, you know your laundry and uh, that's it and you have your velcro and it just wraps around onto there um there are other types that you stick your fingers through and stuff like that they're not so great. They're, they're, it's, it's a good concept, and I bought them. They're not so great. So you just I'm basic, basic. And it, these, I'm telling you, these things, I've had the same type of cuff for over 30 years by the same company, and they just make them and keep them at an affordable price. You know, you wouldn't know that there was a whole inflation thing going on with them, which is really oh, that's weird. great. Yeah. So if you'll share that the link for that with me, then I can share it with the Green Warriors, so we can. If anybody thinks that they want to incorporate those, yeah, I, I recommend them. 
the link will yeah. be to all pro for you. I, okay, that's, excellent. What I, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and Gina said, thank you, Angela. Great workout. Love the new workout room. Hey, Gina. Thank you so much. <laughs> my buddy from Feel Fabulous over 40. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks so much, love. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. I'm glad that she's yeah, here. That, this yeah. one works out. She loves her bands and her tubes and stuff. Oh, see, and that's what we were talking about earlier, right? You find something, keep trying different things, and you're going to find something that you like. And, and we have that's, all that's, me being with Amy. We have the band, bands and tubing workout, several of them over there, I believe. Yes, you do. Yeah, great. so you'll have to check out the playlist. I'll have that in the description below so that you can see on YouTube, we have a playlist just with Angela's workouts and they're, they're fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> and this one's going to be, we'll be editing this one and putting it in there as well. So it's going to be great. I'm going to look and see if we have any more questions. Sure. Let's see. I'm going to look through and we had, I thought I saw something here. Okay. Okay, so John said, I struggle with time management for workouts. How can I integrate functional movements into my busy schedule? Okay, so um, what I do with people is I, I suggest to them to um, take this approach, right? I call it have it your way workouts. And it's a, a separate list of workouts I have on my YouTube channel. And what it is, is I teach one at work, one, one exercise at a time. That is it. I teach one. And basically, it's so that people can create a DIY. It's just a do-it-yourself approach. It's originally founded for people with chronic issues so they don't get hurt. And they can select what works for them, right? But the thing, John, is that I present them in three ways. And so, and meaning with like exercise tubing and then with weight or something like that, you know, and then without what you can do is you can go to the Habit Your Way workouts and just look at what we've got up there so far, and you can just pick a little bit. And you can definitely bring some kind of tube or exercise resistance band, like a TheraBand or an exercise loop to wherever it is that you work. I don't know if it's a home office. I don't know if you're going to a space but they are the most transportable. And also we definitely did on Amy, there is a workout of a portable workout, right, Amy? Workout yes. on the go, we called it. Yes. Workout on the go. So it's for those who are traveling, working. Um, you can do it indoors, outdoors. You can select. But because do understand that my work in total is founded in activities of daily living, and functional movements. And when they're not in a, in a program, I'll say, this is one, this one is more isolated, right? But most of my stuff is about functional compound movements, which means you're involving multiple joints and multiple large muscles concurrently working together. And just pick out one or two on a given day and break it down and do it. And you're going to figure out how then you could fit this in, maybe you want to devote 15 minutes, 20 minutes eventually. But if you don't have that, don't not do it because of that reason. You can take that one exercise, then you're going to grab another one later in the day. And then the other one you maybe was earlier that morning. And then in, in, in the evening, just one exercise and you will wind up giving yourself 15, 20 minutes of some strength training that you didn't build in is a chunk of time. That might be a way to do this. That's a great recommendation. I love that. And right. then it also you, you won't get bored because you can just keep changing the order of things and, and, you know, change things up. That's fantastic. That's right. That's right. And, and, and I'm always going to suggest John that people work larger muscle groups first, because if you don't, you, you're going to exhaust those smaller muscles. And like you saw today, the tricep assists the chest on work. If I were to put the tricep first, then go to do my, my chest press, I wouldn't be able to handle the weight because that extension won't hold because the triceps already over, would at that point be overworked. 
So I hope this makes sense for John. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And Sarah said, can you explain more about the benefits of triple sets and how they differ from traditional sets? Okay. So a set, the word set means a group of repetitions. That's all it means. Now, I, I will add to that. You want to work between eight to 15 repetitions on a set. Now, a triple set is referring to the number of sets the number of exercises and the fact that they're done back to back without rest. The rest came between the blocks of exercises today, not during the exercise. It was just enough for me to bend down, pick up something, maybe put the wrist weights on, whatever it was, right? There was no like stretching in between, which is another way to do it, but, but to do exercise, not to do triple sets. So triple sets are about the number of exercises, three, done three, um, three sets each, but exercise one, followed by exercise two, followed by exercise three, back to one, two, three, one more, one, two, three, then the break if you want a little break and stretch. Does that, does that make sense for her? I'm hoping. I hope so. Yeah, I haven't seen anything, any comment back. So I'm, I think okay. that we probably got that answer. That's that's just fantastic. And I'm going to just throw something else at you then, is that supersetting is typically, well, it's typically two exercises done back to back without any rest. In the true traditional sense, it was opposing muscles only. Not any longer does that apply. But... You can also approach it with, you want to do three sets of each. It doesn't have to be limited to two sets, but it is two exercises that you're referring to when it's a super set, just in case she's heard about that before. Okay, that's great. Good. Well, Green Warriors, again, please click like to show your appreciation for what Angela shared with us today. Angela, can you please tell us about what you do and how we can find you on social media? Well, thank you, Amy. I appreciate that. So on social media, you can find me at my YouTube channel, which is Boomer and Beyond Wellness. And that's my website, by the way, boomerandbeyondwellness.com. And if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to contact me, you can go there by way of the contact form to reach me. Um, I do work virtually um, with personal training, 60 minute sessions, but also with the have it your way workout sessions, one exercise, I do 10 minute sessions. And, um, and it's truly just an immersion in the one exercise you wanna learn. Also on uh, social media and online, you can find my work with whole food plant-based platforms. And I mentioned one before that's Feel Fabulous Over 40. In fact, tomorrow evening, we have a live Zoom class that you can actually join in on. And um, I have that information up within my Facebook page and also my Instagram. And um, I'm also on the platform of uh, Timory Hagenberger's and she's known as the nutrition professor and it's the foodie bar way of life what i do with these two platforms is i provide them with exercise videos that are on the platform for members to be able to access at any time for their workouts and yoga and um and also for feel fabulous i also do once a month a live zoom class for members, but they open it up to non-members for a fee of $9 that gives you a membership for one full month. And you can decide from there if you want to you know, join for the year or monthly, whatever the options are. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate that. Well, thank you for sharing all that with us. You're really helping the world. And I, I love, love all the things that you're doing. And I love how you take the time to share things with us on on this broadcast. And I really want to thank you, Angela. Oh, it's my pleasure, Amy. Thank you so much. You give me a wonderful opportunity here to experiment. Well, I mean, you led us through an invigorating workout session <laughs> and your expertise and your encouragement. It's, it, it's just so inspiring. It's inspired us 
to push ourselves further. And we can't wait for the next session because like, we're going to plan on you coming back, right? Yeah. <laughs> and we have something special booked with Vic, with uh, Vicky Brett Gack, right? Vicky so, Brett Gack, who yeah. was on the show. She did a breakfast, lunch, and dinner wow. thing for us. And now we're stay tuned for that. And you're going to see that we're going to have a dynamic duo coming on with eating and exercising. You've got to love at least one of them. Yeah, that's right. Let me tell you something. I, I always threaten Vicki with, I'm going to move next door because I need to have your food. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's got some great recipes. Oh, so, Angela, what's your final take-home message for our Green Warriors? Find a way and don't give up. Don't give up. Don't let anybody condescend and tell you you're less than because maybe you're going through some health issue or maybe you're just getting on in years. I'm going to be 66. I don't care. I love it, you know, um, and uh, just don't let anybody else put up limiting beliefs because that's that's their thing, not yours. Don't let them impose it on you. Find a way to do what you have to do to take care of yourself. That's all. But you do it with love and respect for both yourself and perhaps for the people that it's just not common for them to see. Yep. And you're just so inspiring. And Lucas said, hi, Angela. I love your bouncing on the ball so much. I wish you should do more bouncing on the ball a lot. <laughs> okay, Luca, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> well, you actually did a stability ball workout. So yeah. you can go yeah. and check that out. I'm sure you have those kind of workouts on your YouTube channel. You've done them on mine. So. Right. You can, right. you can yeah. check them out as well. Have you done yoga on the ball too on your on your your channel, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a nice stretch. It really yeah. is. Oh, beautiful to use the ball for stretching. Yeah. Well, uh, Green Warrior, tell us in the comments, what are you going to remember from today's presentation or your experience with the workout? One of my takeaways is to work out the large muscle groups first. I like that idea. I also wanted to thank Jess Task Voice. She did the promos and she did the countdown. She, Angela had a slot in here at the last moment and Jess Task Voice was on an airplane. So I did the promo. But then when she got off the airplane, she said, no, I'm doing the promo. And she did the promo and it was wonderful. Yes, so we have, have her down in the books for you as well. She's not going to miss out on, on you. She wanted to do your promo. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's remarkable, though, what she does with these promos in 25 seconds uh, or less. The, yeah. the information she gets in there. And also, it's just like the the tone of her voice, the, the kind of inflections, and she just captures you. You're like, you're right there. <laughs> and it's just, it's just marvelous. And I want to thank her very much because she just, she, I, I think she has a really good time doing her job and that's what comes across. And I so appreciate that because you put all this energy into it. And sometimes the promo might be a little flat, you know, and this is just dynamite. Thank you so much, Jess. I really appreciate that. And speaking of Jess Tess voice, tell us who's coming up next. Did you know that heart disease is the leading cause of death for women globally? Discover a groundbreaking perspective with Dr. Akil Teher as he unveils the powerful truth that your genes don't determine your destiny. Join us to explore actionable steps and learn what you can do about it, taking charge of your heart health journey. Bring your questions for Akil Teher, MD, on Wednesday, February 21st, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy Live. All right. I hope you guys will be there. You talk about active <laughs> aging. You talk about senior fitness. Oh, people need to see that man as a doctor instead of these other doctors who just don't get up. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, he doesn't know he gets up. He gets upside down and does a handstand. Yes, I, mean, stand. I mean, oh my gosh, he's amazing. <laughs> Inversion postures all the way. Oh, he's just awesome. Thank you. That was yeah. so fun. Well, Green Warriors, your engagement and thoughtful questions in the chat have been invaluable. And please stay tuned for more empowering discussions and more workouts with Angela. And remember, your journey to a healthier plant-based lifestyle is a powerful step towards overall well-being. And thanks again, Angela. Thank you, Green Warrior. 
And as a special thank you to you, I am offering you five free recipes. So if you just go on my website, beatgreenwithamy.com slash join, then you can get five free recipes from me. And I'll send them to you very soon. So Green Warriors and Angela, take your right hand and grab your left shoulder and take your left hand and grab your right shoulder. Now squeeze. And that's a hug from me to all of you and to you, Angela. And if you would like to join me and Angela as we sign off with my taglines, you go ahead and type it in the comments below and we're going to say it for you here. Until I see you all again, remember, be strong, <laughs> be well, and be green. <laughs> Thanks, Green Warrior. Thank you, Angela. Thanks, Take Grace. care, everyone. Now you can get five free whole food plant-based SOS free recipes from Be Green with Amy. Just click on the link in the show notes and Amy will send you five free recipes, motivational quotes, and more so you can be strong, be well, and be green.